I'm going to start the webinar and start the recording and we can let people in that way if needed. That sounds good. I mean, sometimes I know you send us the panel links, but sometimes I can't find them either. <laughs> I like look everywhere. Yeah, well, Gilford I, said uh, apparently the one I sent out today was just the general one. So I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Well, now we have Bruce, we have Marcus and Kim. Kim might be an attendee. So could we let her in? Oh, and Myra Ross is here too. I'd be happy if they both want to join as panelists. Yeah, everyone's popping up. So hold on one second. I had trouble Thanks, logging Amber. on. Yeah, I think we got the panelist one. We were not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know my term was up already. I know. It's like, ah. Myra, I'm trying yeah, to Bruce. Yeah, great. Bruce, have you been asked if you want to stay on and can you tell us a secret answer um, no i i haven't been contacted oh okay all right i heard from the town manager's office that somebody there was going to ask you oh that's very nice yeah no i've not heard anything okay well thank you please tell us all the secret handshake i will <laughs> Well, he's the he's the longest member, I think. I'm glad you said that instead of the oldest member. <laughs> oh, definitely not the oldest member. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when you served the town before that, right on the planning board and other yes things. So can Myra come in? Maybe she wants to just be an attendee. If that Myra, if you can hear us and you want to be a panelist, feel free to click that and otherwise we'll keep you as a attendee and you can um, raise your hand if you want to speak. Thank you. Oh, Myra's here. Okay. I'm yeah, I was outside. Um, I, I don't have a panelist uh, email. Has left. I thought I was supposed to, Andrew but Sandberg I guess I didn't get it. It's okay. Oops. But you're here now. Thank you. Does anybody hear me? Myra, here? yes. I'm trying to promote you to a panelist, but it's not. Uh, okay. But I see it her. That it's going to have you rejoin the webinar as a panelist. I don't know if you can see that on your end. Uh, she, I mean, she's on the screen, so she is a panelist, right? No, it just says she's an uh, attorney. Oh, I see. I got. Yeah, it took me out and made me come back in again. <laughs> All right. All right. Should um we get this meeting going? We have everything. definitely. Let's get it going. So, okay. Kim, do you have that language, or do you want me to yes, pull it up? I have it. Um, pursuant to Governor awesome. Baker's March twelfth, twenty twenty order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation. <laughs> Um, the first agenda item, welcome to everyone. Um, there are some new people to me. Um, I'm Kim Tremblay, I'm a long standing, standing member of the um, TAC. And um, although I'm the vice chair, I tend to run the meeting and, and um, Tracy does the seriously heavy lifting part, <laughs> which is oh, all good. Kim, Kim keeps us on track. Yeah, I keep us on track, so, that's right. Um, thank you, thank so, you Kim. The um, first uh, uh, agenda item is um, any public comment, and I'm not sure who here is. I mean, we're all public. We are all public and private members, I guess. But um, if anyone has any comment prior to the meeting, I see no hands. We're all members or staff, but Myra, would, do you have any public comment? Okay, no public right. comment. So um, our next agenda, agenda item is the approval of the past meeting minutes. We have um, Amber handed out mi minutes from um, th the uh, Thursday, February 10th and Thursday, um, March 3rd meetings. Um, I'll pause for a few moments to allow um, people to read those minutes and um, make sure they jive with what uh, your recollection is. And we yep. will vote on those. 
in a moment. Yes. Now, Kim, she also distributed the February 10th meeting minutes. Oh, so. that's funny. I didn't, February 10th? Yeah. I think we were backed up a little bit. No, it's in February the attachment that the she wrong wrong today. Date. Oh. Because Fe we have the February, I mean, Fe oh, sorry, February 10th. You said, yeah, we have the February 10th and March 15th, March 3rd. Is there another one? There were three in the attachments that Amber sent out this afternoon. Yeah, one this was morning. the, the attachment was agenda. the agenda. One was the current agenda. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks for clarifying. I, I just have a couple of editorial uh, corrections on March the 3rd. Under number three, parking permit regulation revisions memo, it should be individual instead of individually. Oh, yeah. And then I wasn't sure what the meaning was under C. Memo is presented at TSO meeting and town manager would check in and see if the T, if the TAC regulations made sense. Um, is there is there maybe a word missing there somewhere? And when, and we asked that he check or I wasn't sure what that whole meaning was there. So that was just an update provided by me. And I think that um, my recollection of that TSO meeting was that the, what the town manager and the finance director said is that the TAC had made two recommendations, right? We had made one recommendation about Page and Beston, and then the one recommendation about the North Pleasant Street near Kendrick Park, and that he just wanted to, because those were unfamiliar to him, he wanted to just double check with staff such as DPW and planning and the parking people and so on to see if our recommendations made sense to move forward. I will okay. say at the last TSO meeting, the more recent one that the TSO agreed with the Page and Beston item and they oh, didn't good. take any action and and they didn't take any action on the north pleasant street um the town manager mentioned that the um, that dpw will be making a new presentation to the council soon on the D on north pleasant street at kendrick so um so i guess in terms of the minutes instead of just saying the tax regulations we don't have regulations but you could just say if the tax recommendations maybe if we just change that does that make sense to people yes so, yes. and we could also just say would check, you know, with other would check with town staff, you know, just to to vet the tax recommendations kind of thing. So, yeah. well, I I could I could uh, propose then that the minutes for February tenth and March third be approved with those changes made. Second. A second. You second, Bernie. Yep. All those in favor. Um, I think we, uh, uh, I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at one of those, but it looks like otherwise a unanimous um, decision. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and thank you. Uh, thank you, Amber. Thanks. And um, the next agenda item is a proposed new crosswalk on East Pleasant. Um, and as well as the related um, shared streets grants improvements. And this will be a presentation by Ben Brager and uh, Christine Bristrup. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. And, I'm, thank you. and I'm just before they speak, this hadn't come up at, at our last meeting. Um, but just for a little bit of context. So after our last meeting, I was contacted by Chris and just asked um, because, you know, the town manager had been in touch with the council president and so on. And they were interested in getting the TAC and DAC feedback on the proposed changes before it goes to the council for consideration. So Chris and Ben asked to be invited to the meeting and here they are. And I'm looking forward to that presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, well, nice to meet you all virtually. My name is Ben uh, Breger. I'm a planner with the town. Um, so yeah, I'll get, just give you a little bit of background. Um, the town, 
we applied for and received, I think it was around $184,000 um, grant from MassDOT under their Shared Streets program. Um, this was a, their Shared Streets program was kind of a response to the pandemic and the um, really big focus on outdoor spaces, outdoor dining, pedestrian safety, and just making downtowns safer. And really it's all about, you know, it's supposed to be quick, impl quick implementation projects. However, they've been nice and very flexible with some of these larger infrastructure projects, even like just a crosswalk and curb ramps can take a little while to plan out and, and install. So um, we got this grant, ooh, I wanna say in, in the winter, um, we've implemented parts of the grant, um, which I'll show you images of today. Uh, we've also had to shift courses a little bit with, from the original scope and are now proposing um, spending the, the funds on a new proposed crosswalk uh, near Kendrick Park. So we're seeking your input uh, and approval on that today. Um, but I also just wanted to you know, give you an update on the grant and, um, and show you what we've done so far. So I will um, share my screen here. So I'm gonna just run through some kind of highlights so far. Um, so we have uh, repainted three crosswalks in downtown Amherst, uh, kind of in the northern part of downtown Amherst, and that's using the th new thermoplastic uh, brick treatment. Um, along with those three crosswalks, there's been three or six curb ramps that have been, you know, redone and have, have tactile surface pads added to them. Um, near the uh, spoke and the, I think the People's Bank, that area, there's been around 200 feet of repaved sidewalk with asphalt um, finish. Um, we've ordered rapid response flashing beacons to be placed um, in and around that area. And then, yeah, coming before you today to show you the proposal for the new crosswalk at Garcia's. And then another kind of future goal is to uh, fill uh, this sidewalk gap on Triangle Street that's kind of outside of uh, Kendrick Place, the, the building at the, in that area, Kendrick Place. And I'll show you a map of where that is. So here's kind of um, the, the areas where we've done crosswalks. So we've done crosswalks, and sorry, just to orient you, this all oh, this is Kendrick Park. You see the roundabout here. Um, so we've done crosswalks at um, the intersection here with North Pleasant. I can't see. Uh, um, yeah, oh. I can zoom in a little bit. Is that helpful? No, no, no. I just couldn't see your uh, your cursor. Cursor. Okay. Sorry. Can you can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Maybe I'll do the hand. That's yeah, that's easier. Um. So yeah, we've done a crosswalk here. This one has been repainted. This one is more like a you know, mid block crosswalk, if you will, I guess it's technically at the intersection of Prey and North uh, or Prey and East Pleasant. It's East Pleasant here. So that one has been redone. And then the one that crosses over Prey has been redone with the thermoplastic brick treatment. And then the 200 feet of new sidewalk kind of extends from this bus stop here, all the way uh, kind of midway up to the spoke. And so the just to, um, I'll get to this a little bit later, but just to show you the, the proposed crosswalk, um, I guess you can't see Kendrick Park on, or Kendrick Playground on this map, but Kendrick Playground is over here. There's an asphalt path that comes down and meets the sidewalk here. And the proposed new crosswalk would connect the end of that um, asphalt trail that's within the park and then uh, continue cross East Pleasant towards uh, what is now uh, Garcia's restaurant. And so that's the proposed new crosswalk location. I'll show you drawings for that in a second. And then just to orient you, the sidewalk gap that we're wanting to fill is kind of somewhere in this area. It's also around 150 feet. And my understanding is there used to be sidewalk there, but the when they built Kendrick Place, there had to be utility work there. So they ripped up the sidewalk and then it hasn't been replaced since then. So we're gonna look at uh, replacing or kind of filling in that gap to try to really try to complete that network. If you're walking down Triangle Street, it kind of sidewalk just kind of ends, which is no fun for anyone. Um, 
here's just some images of the new crosswalks and the tactile warning pads. This is crossing over Prey Street. You can see the new sidewalk that was done as well. Um, this is the same area, I guess, oh, before they actually put in this crosswalk. So there, there's a thermoplastic crosswalk there now, but you can kind of see the extent of the new sidewalk and the grass has kind of come back up, which is nice in this area. And then here's um, crossing over um, East Pleasant Street towards Kendrick Park. Um, you'd be standing at the People's Bank right now and looking towards Kendrick Park. So, and then here's crossing, um, I always blank on this street name, but it's, is it? Oh, that little street. Halleck maybe, or? Yeah, it's but Halleck. It's Halleck, yeah. So yeah. you're crossing over Halleck on your way to Kendrick Park here. And we've gotten really good um, reviews on the thermoplastic brick. I'm sure Guilford can speak to that a bit more um, as well, but it's durable, it's highly visible. Um, it, uh, you can see it as you're approaching and it has a little bit of, you know, non-slip surface to it. It's grippy, which is nice. So yeah, we feel, feel good about it. And then I'll show you, yeah, here's just an image of that, of the gap in the sidewalk on Triangle Street. It just kind of ends there. So we'll work towards um, kind of laying some new sidewalk in that area. And then, um, so I'm going to that now kind of shift Quick gears. I'm gonna... Sorry. Yes. Why is the town responsible for that when somebody else did it? Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't know too much about the history. That is a definitely good, valid question. Um. Might need to look at kind of the permitting history or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um. Or or maybe it's just been lost with the you know. Yeah. with time kind of if there was an agreement about that um, i mean i think it's private property like i looked into it because i had raised this issue before tso at least like six months ago or a year ago I and mean, it used to even be blocked like with the jersey barrier but it's sort of been this gap for a while um and yeah. i think it's actually owned by the people who own the adjacent like parking lot because it's sort of considered like an um, an access point to the parking lot or it could be or something um, well, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean to... I'm glad it's getting I'm glad it's getting fixed because it is I mean it's you know a critical gap it's the, you know in the middle of downtown so when it, and it heads to the if it is point. private property are we having to purchase the land anyway it must be the public way yeah Chris, yeah Chris so if it's public it. way I mean yeah anyway Chris may have additional information is part of the public way. It's not private okay. property. The pu okay. private property ends at the edge of the building. The building okay, is right it. up on the property line. That's close. close. Yeah. yeah, it's close. I'd be interested to know, you know, why it didn't get fixed when it got busted since it is public way. But mm -hmm. um, at least they're fixing it now. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so now if it's okay, I'm going to just switch gears a little bit and show you the um, drawings that uh, DPW produced for the new crosswalk. Um, and this is what we're needing to get um, town council approval for because it's a change in the public way. So we're, uh, yeah, just interested in any feedback or um, thoughts you may have on, on this proposal. Um, so again, just to kind of orient you, here's the locust map. It's Garcia's over here, Kendrick Park. Um, you can kind of see here's an updated image that shows that asphalt pathway coming out. Um, and basically the, the crosswalk, there'd be a new curb ramp here. The crosswalk would pick up right there and come across the street um, towards Garcia's, which you see up here. Um, here's the, the construction drawing. So um this the crosswalk itself would be the thermoplastic brick like we've seen um in downtown with the newer crosswalks um tactile pads on either edge and then um you know just cur ramping to get down um from the sidewalk and down from the the path here as well so fairly um straightforward i th i think um 
a crosswalk proposal with, with two new curb ramps. So, um, may I just that, ask? It looks as if on the park side there is a street lamp. Is there a, a, a street light or lamp somewhere on the other side of East Pleasant Street that's nearby the crosswalk? Can you, does that indicate? Um, so yeah, on the park, you see there, there's one right here on so this right side. I'm, um, I'm not entirely sure. That's a yeah. good point though. I'll make a note of that. To... It doesn't look like there's one on the other side. That would be yeah. all helpful. Yeah. So I, I have a question. Um, so I really love my children walk. I live um, uh, off of McClellan and my kids walk to the high school every day. So they use the new crosswalk by People's Bank um, every day to walk to school. So thank you, that's beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm curious who the sidewalk there, why a sidewalk on that side, on North Pleasant and or, is that North Pleasant? That's North Pleasant, East Pleasant. Why not on e on the East Pleasant side? Because because the people who are using the playground are not people coming from Garcia's or even people coming from, um, uh, you know, either of those um, new. Um, apartment complexes it's people mm -hmm. coming from because there's there's also no um public parking on that side right so parents with children are coming from the other side of the of like mcclellan and north pleasant side and there currently actually are no crosswalks on north pleasant from mm -hmm. McClellan, like crossing the street there actually zero on North Pleasant, you know, that stretch of North Pleasant from McClellan that that um, hit the park. Um, right. hit and, park. But no, aren't those in the plans? Well, those are right, in the they're all in the plans. plans. Yeah. I don't yeah. understand who the sidewalks are for. That's so what I, I can, I, sorry, but for me is really, I mean, I park in the, you know, the Prey Street lot and go across to the, um, yeah, that's to the Kendrick with my kids. Which I, the number of times, Sorry, which, which lot? Gray Street lot. It's I don't over know. here. Yeah, I, I I really don't know that. Yeah, I mean, basically back there because they've got the a an electronic electric there. vehicle charging. No, there's station. public there's yeah. public parking back there. Yeah. Oh, there are. Yeah. Oh, I did. And the number of Next. times I have had to stop because somebody is jaywalking between Garcia's and um, the Kendrick Park park is just silly so this is like exactly in the right but, spot but, i mean it's but where it's, but where but you don't use the one that is on praise I, I do i'm saying that there are so many people that jaywalk between garcia's and the kendrick park that i've had to stop for personally when i'm driving my car down into town that this is like exactly you know the right spot because if you're parking at the prey street lot or wherever you're going you don't really want to have to go down to the bank and then oh, okay. come up to the park you want to go across which one is exactly the, which one sorry marcus which is the where is it so you see where prey is in the map that um you were just sorry, showing just, yeah sorry. so it's it's here right there yeah they've got electric yes. vehicle charging points so right there <laughs> So I park there. Prey Street is that small street, Kim, that runs between uh, East Pleasant and um, uh, Triangle. And there's public parking in that area. I had no I mean, idea. There's the business parking, like where the laundry mat, but there's also a public parking lot in yeah. there. Yeah. But that will be going away, right? With and there's also no. per and there's also permit park. No, there's also permit parking in there too. I had no idea. Sorry, yeah. I have never. Yeah, so, there. yeah. I do have one property. question though. Sorry. Given, given the street, is there thought to raising the crosswalk? Um, because it seems like it would be an excellent opportunity to slow traffic going. Okay. You know, okay. especially stop people accelerating from the uh, roundabout into yeah, town was, by putting that as a raise. I think that's an excellent idea, Marcus. I was thinking the same thing, that 
to yep. slow down traffic both directions. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, there's a ton of people with their hands up. Sorry. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I can't see anybody. Sorry. No. Oh, all right. Who else has a question? A lot of almost all of us have their hands up. Can you see us, Kim? Even yeah. Guilford. Guilford had his hand up too. No, I can't see. Any, I don't know why I can't see anything. I see Myra has a question. Yes, uh, it's actually not a question. I just wanted to tell you how the DAAC responded to this issue, which um, I love the raised uh, crosswalk idea. We did not think of that. So that's perfect. Um, and I wanna just fill you in on what the original plan was that they are not doing. The original reason for this construction was to sort of have a workaround so that one could cross over Triangle Street from the north to uh, to the south. Now you have, th they took away that light on the corner and you can't do that anymore without being in the roundabout, which um, for visually impaired people is impossible. So you can't cross the street there. So the reason um, that there, there was, the original was to attach both ends of Prey Street, which is a right angle street, so uh, to the other side so that people could walk um, without having to cross the roundabout. And what they had to take out because they don't own the land and because there was utility issues is the crosswalk that goes across Tri Triangle Street at Prey Street, um, which was an important part of the original uh, concept. And that's why they had money to put the good idea crosswalk from Garcia's to Kendrick Park. But what ben, they can you didn't- show that plan? Can Ben show the plan that Myra is talking about? Yes, um, right, that would be here, yep. So what they did is great. What they weren't able to do is still a big problem because there is no crosswalk to cross over Triangle Street at Prey Street and there is no way to cross in the roundabout. So you're if you're at the, like where, uh, what's it called, Primo 2, if you're trying to go from there mm -hmm. to downtown, you really can't cross very safely. And also that missing sidewalk is a big problem because if you're coming from the south and you make a right turn onto Triangle Street to go over to Cottage, where you would wanna cross, um, the sidewalk is missing. Yeah. And you have to go in the street. And it's not exactly a street that has no traffic on it. So mm -hmm. I would hope that that would be something that they would um, fix pretty quickly because it's been that way for a long time, but I thought it was all gonna get fixed as part of the redo of that intersection, which now has had to be postponed because I guess they have to take some land. You could explain that, Chris, I guess. You have to take some land and there's some utility work so it's gonna be an expensive thing, but I just wanna make sure that the TAC knows about it because I hope you will advocate for it um, because it's an, important, uh, it's an important way to cross over Triangle Street, which at the moment, there isn't a good way to do. Thank you, Myra. Anyone else? I'm sorry, I can't see everybody. So I have a Sure. Um, so, Oh, okay. I'm, so one of the things I was interested in um, is, and Ben, if you could pull up the plan, I'd like to just um, focus just on the crosswalk, though I do agree with some of the concerns Myra was expressing. Um, but um, Ben, can you go back to the plans that are showing the two ends of the proposed sidewalk um, and like them with the photo of like where they're located? Yeah, okay. So when I was in that area recently, one thing that I was thinking about is um, if you're on the Garcia side, is that the parking, and I took some pictures of it too, but the, the, the parkers are parked like pretty close. Up, it, to me, it seems like up towards the driveway or the private mm -hmm. parking lot for Garcia's. And um, so one concern I had was just um, sometimes when the cars are so parked, like I actually think, and the photo that you have on the upper right-hand side, it, 
it's showing a car parked and then the sign, but I actually think that there's a parking space that might be closer to the intersection. At least it seemed like that. I mean, maybe my perception's wrong, but um, just in terms of making sure that if pedestrians are going to be crossing right next to the entrance and exit for the private parking lot, that maybe um, that they're going to be aware of the pedestrians there too. And so it's not going to be a conflict with pedestrians. And so I guess, I mean, even though it's a private, that is a private lot. I mean, if there could be like a stop sign or something, I don't know how that works on private um, lots, but like to encourage at least cars who are exiting there to stop and just, mm -hmm. you know, look both ways and make sure that there is no pedestrian conflict there. Um, and pref I mean, the other thing I noticed is that that also is very pretty close to uh, the roundabout. I mean, not super close, but pretty close. And what I was noticing when I saw cars going through there, you know, coming from the north is that basically once people clear the roundabout, yeah, they you know, their first impulse is to accelerate. They do. Yeah. So um, I guess I would encourage too that that, I mean, this isn't under the purview of the TAC, but, you know, if there could be a raised crosswalk or other ways to help calm the traffic there, like the rapid rectangular flashing beacons or something, that that could be a way to make sure that people are not going to be going too fast by the time they hit that crosswalk. Um, and then my other question was on the park side, there are two places on the park side where there's already the curb cut is already like down to the street. And so do those line up with the crosswalk or I mean, does one of them line no, up with the that, crosswalk or not? Unfortunately not. Yeah. Okay. And then on the Garcia side, there's also a little like ramp up closer to the corner yeah over like here closer to kendrick place mm -hmm. and, oh, okay and what's the um, yeah i wasn't sure what the function what the function of that is if you guys know I'm not sure. yeah so i think on your site plan there it would be looking up towards like to the north north of the blue or okay, above over the here blue somewhere rectangular yeah yeah I agree Only with back from um, when it was a car dealership. No, I mean those are new because this is all like up to Triangle Street. It's um, it's all the new building and everything. Mm. But, th but there's like sort of like a. Oh, I think I've noticed those. That's, it might be for for anyway. people who are uh, parallel park to um, get onto the sidewalk uh, potentially. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, but other you. than that, I, I mean, I support the sidewalk there. I was just worried about the pedestrians. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks. Any other comments? Thank you, Tracy. That was useful. Yeah, I have a couple of comments and a question as well for, um, for Ben and Christine. Um, so have you guys, first of all, uh, have you guys done any, is there any kind of traffic study done to see how often this crosswalk be used? The reason I'm asking is because um, like Tracy just mentioned, it is close to the roundabout, which already has a crosswalk. And my concern is, uh, well, A, people accelerating out of that and into now the new crosswalk, the proposed crosswalk. And B, uh, if there is significant traffic that backs up because people are crossing, especially frequently, it's going to block the inside of that roundabout, which is, defeats the purpose of the roundabout. So has there any has there been any kind of study done as to how often this will be used or any kind of site visits or observations? Um, thanks, Stefan. So um, I will say we've not considered the impact to the roundabout in terms of traffic flow and if that gets backed up necessarily. Um, but um, my sense is just, you know, from a from a logical standpoint, you know, we're seeing a, a new hub of activity at the playground. And then on the other side of the street is public parking and restaurants and um, some other amenities and just kind of wanting to bridge bridge that gap. Um, so um, to my knowledge, we haven't done a formal study um, to, you know, that resulted in this crosswalk being created, but it was just kind of, it was part of the Kendrick Park plan um, to develop the crosswalk in this location. And then also, um, yeah, just, you know, uh, I think the the roundabout can be, um scary and and 
to cross for some people, just given that it's kind of three different islands almost, especially in the location where you have to cross East Pleasant Street. Um, and so this, you know, crosswalk here could provide a, an opportunity to cross East Pleasant um, for folks um, who don't want to cross at the roundabout as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think I think Myra made a very salient. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of you know that 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 is it's further away from the crosswalk, which from the roundabout, which does scare people, and and it is not safe for certain people. So I think having one further away um, and closer to town makes sense. Yeah, and I mean certainly from observations, like I said, we've seen plenty of people. I have seen plenty of people jaywalking at that exact point, so. But, but not so many that it would back up track, traffic. No, 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 no. But I enough that it annoys me. Off. But yeah, it's a it's a one one or two person piece. It you know yes. Right now, I have to say that J that Garcia's is the only public rest sorry non public restroom around the playground. So when you have a five-year-old that needs to use the restroom, you have to run over there. Mm -hmm. could, could I ask Ben to explain where the flashing lights would be on, on these different crossings? Yeah, thank you. So um, that the locations actually haven't been fully finalized at this point. Um, I'm meeting with the town engineer next week to kind of go over the different options. The, the beacons have been ordered, but um, we're still kind of figuring out the best locations, but certainly this new crosswalk would be a strong consideration. Thank you. Yeah. And so is there a possibility of raising them? Like what's involved with that? Um, I, Guilford might be able to speak to it better, but I, I remember talking to the town engineer at a very early stage when we were considering crosswalks um, in this location and um, end up on triangle and just the you have to be really careful with the drainage issues because um, this is it may I think it is kind of a low-ish point in the road it dips a little bit and water could um, mm. be caught by the the raised crosswalk was one issue that was raised huh. um, but we could definitely look into it more I, I'm trying to recall that I mean if not there the other one yeah we've already done the work I mean it just seems like the street in general, yeah, do with something to help that, yeah, yeah, and even the earlier one, the one, well, it, the other on the the other one side. by the bank, yeah. yeah, even that one, so, right? one of them. Yeah, there's no, it doesn't look like there's a drain in the road from mm -hmm. from. Oh, so, and there's one across the street from Prey. Yeah, that might right. work. So Chris has a question or comment. Chris's not. hand is raised. I, I wanted to respond to Stefan um, and his questioning of this crosswalk in this location. So, um, you know, we had originally included the crosswalks on Triangle Street as part of this project, and that's what we used to um, uh, write the grant proposal and get money from the state. But when it turned out that that didn't work out, um, Guilford and Jason Skeels, the uh, town engineer, came up with this location as an alternative. And I think it made sense because there's a clear path coming across Kendrick Park at that point. And it just sort of dumps you out on the sidewalk on uh, the Kendrick Park side of East Pleasant Street. So then the natural movement would be to move across the street. So Guilford might have some more thoughts about why this is a good location, but I wanted to bring that point to your attention that it was um, the DPW who really proposed this. No, thanks, Christina. No, I appreciate that. And the other thing I just want to mention, maybe Christina can also just, while I have you, um, maybe you can also speak to this if there's been any kind of um, anyone else mentioning this, but in this top photo on the right here where it's facing Garcia's, you see that gray car on the far left, they're parked. Uh, obviously, the crosswalk is going to go like right in the middle of this photo where, you know, where the photo is taken. Um, the only thing I've noticed from personal experience is a lot of people, because obviously there's that residential building there, 57 East Plus Street, the Kendrick building. A lot of people double park here um, for, I've seen uh, the same car parked there when I, I come through and I come back an hour later and still park there. So a lot of double parking, um, which I know is not much that we can do about as a town. I mean, you can enforce it, but only to a certain extent and so often. 
But my concern is that if people are double parking here and you put a crosswalk right in the middle of this top photo, it's going to, I think, and maybe Tracy spoke about this, but I'm concerned about people coming out of the uh, roundabout heading into town and this is creating a blind spot with the cars parked there. So either deleting, you know, I don't know what the feasibility that is, but deleting a, a parking spot here, like where that gray car is to, to gain more, mm -hmm. uh, a, a better vantage point from drivers coming out of the roundabout um, or, or moving the crosswalk, you know, uh, more, I'm trying to think, more to south, in a more southerly direction towards town, which I know is probably not ideal because you are trying to hook it up with this new paved um, walkway coming out of the park in the bottom photo. So I get, I get that idea, but I, I just, I'm just concerned if we leave that parking spot there where that gray car is, and there's people double parking, whether it's food delivery, and I know a lot of students live there, so especially around move-in time, you know, first week, uh, last week of um, August, first week of September, and then you know, move out in May. Obviously, those are very temporary periods, but throughout the years, a lot of cars I see double parked here often. Um, mm -hmm. So it, again, it can be for a few minutes. It can be, I've seen, like I said, the same car, I come back around an hour later and still there with its flashers on or not and um, blocking the bike lane or, or even just parked not in a spot, like right against the exit of Garcia's there, right against the curb. So I don't know, that, that's just something I, I'm concerned about is a car coming out, not seeing a kid or someone who's maybe they're also not paying attention crossing and, you know, you have a... Of unfortunate so, yeah i mean that's a good point especially but if you're coming down from the from the roundabout i mean it's on the other side of the street right so you do have the widest view and if we've got the that is that going to be mitigated enough with the rapid flight flashing beacons would that be sufficient well that to... hasn't been that hasn't been determined yet but um I mean, I think those are good questions. Um, and and Christine has her hand up. Christine? I, I think I just um, wanted to raise that not only do I experience people crossing there already, but, um, you know, with strollers <laughs> and kids on bikes and, uh, you know, with training wheels and the whole nine yards. So I guess I would just advocate that I'd the flashing lights, it, it would be great if they went there too, just to slow everybody down and let folks get across with um, the equipment, um, you know, that comes with bringing small children to and from a playground as well. So I just wanted to add that piece. I'm, I'm not sure it needs to be raised, um, although I like the idea, but I think the flashing lights, um, I think it's a great spot to consider flashing lights. Thank you. So um, I have a question just, um, so Stefan raised a question about the cars and double parking. And then I had asked about um, the idea of having a stop sign when people are exiting the private parking lot. But I mean, does it, and does it seem, I mean, speak from the town staff, if you are willing to comment at this time on these, like, are those things that seem like they could be feasible or, um, so, I mean, just kind of throwing it out there. So, Delphi I mean, I realize they might need, they might both need like further study and I don't know. I mean, I think I've seen other private parking lots that have stop signs you know, as you're entering the roadway, but I don't know how those are put up or who's responsible for those or any of those details. Well, I think it's particularly relevant so. if we're installing a new like use, that, uh, ho hopefully, widely used crosswalk right in front of, you know, right to the side of their parking lot. You know, that makes sense. I mean, is it just because of the, the crosswalk or should it also be the fact that there's a, a heavily used footpath right in front of the stop, uh, the parking lot as well? I mean, there is a sidewalk there already. Right, right exactly. I yeah, mean, to me, yeah, that's true too. That's a good point. Um, it was also just about like the potential with it, like if there's any blind spots, you know, for the drivers, particularly as Stefan said, if there's any cars parked there. And, and as Christine was just talking about small children and tricycles and all that, right? We just want to make sure that it's safe. And so I would feel more comfortable if those types of measures were taken there, including perhaps like losing a parking space and adding the stop sign. Delford, what do you think?
Um, we don't dictate, we the public works department don't dictate stop signs on private property. Usually when it goes through site plan review, that's when they're usually put in. Um, because if you, I mean, your manual, your driver's manual, which we all read back when we were like two um, and we don't remember, um, we're supposed to stop at crosswalk or sidewalks when we're leaving a parking lot or a driveway, and then we're supposed to proceed through. So we don't, they're not normally put at places like that unless the site plan review decides it's something that should be done. And when, when is the site plan like done? Like at what stage is it if, if there's like a new building going in or is it like, I don't understand that. I'm sorry. That's I mean, it seems, usually it's pretty early on the process, right? It's like when Garcia's came in and said, this is what we're proposing for the site or. But this is an addition to, I mean, all this has changed since Garcia's went in, right? <clears throat> uh, Christine, Chris yeah, we're well past that. that process, right? I mean, that's long oh. gone. So this was originally Bertucci's, and before mm -hmm. that, it was a car dealership. But when it was Bertucci's for a long time, there was a parking lot there, and they did go through some sort of permit process with either the Zoning Board of Appeals or, um, excuse me. Um, the planning board, I don't remember which, um, but that wasn't considered at the time. Putting a right, stop but there the also wasn't a playground there. Right, so going back in time, um, it's, it's hard to put these things in going back in time. Um, so, you know, Garcia's has already been permitted. Um, I suppose there's an opportunity to ask the proprietor of Garcia's if he would be willing to put in a stop sign there. Um, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't thought of at the time that he went through the permitting process. Well, yeah. Oh I no, understood. And what what about this idea about um, again? I mean, if staff could maybe check about where the parking, the on street parking spaces end, just to make sure that there's some good sight lines there and that the sight lines aren't being blocked. I mean, to Stefan's part point about people dubbing parking, I, I think that, I mean, I would hope that if there's a crosswalk there, particularly say one with, you know, flashing lights and so on, that people would not double park in a crosswalk. I mean, I, as much as I see people double parking, for the most part, I don't see, I see people stay off of crosswalks. I th doesn't the so, town... Maybe I'm just optimistic about... Yeah, yeah time, I, at the same time, I mean, seem... why are we trying to remove a parking spot for a legal activity? I mean, shouldn't we, as part of the rollout of the crosswalk, shouldn't the police and the parking be focusing on that point anyway? I mean, should we be, a, should we be making accommodations for illegal activity? It's just my question. Well, the, day, the day that I was there, there wasn't anybody double parked, and I was still just concerned about the sight lines with the cars exiting the parking lot. Uh, so, absolutely. I mean, that's, my request, my request would just be that staff looks at it, and if it's appropriate, that maybe one space could be removed or something. But, yeah. but uh, I, so I, sorry, I agree with Stefan. I mean, I've seen plenty of people double parked out there as well, and um, so you know, for who knows what reasons. I mean, these are, you know, essentially teenagers doing this. So who knows mm -hmm. what is in their head. <clears throat> I, I just had a question. I would think, is, wouldn't there be a, a state regulation as to how close parking is allowed to a crosswalk? I would think that would already be in, in some sort of a code. Yeah. Do you know, Chris or Ben? I don't offhand. I think that there's some best practices. There's some best practices on it, but um, I, I haven't we, seen yeah. it in a couple. Can we go back to the, I mean, what would, there's already a parking space there. What would be the effort in building out the, the curb to create? That's probably not within the scope of this um, grant. So we okay. have a grant for $184,000. Yeah, so, so it just takes too much. Yeah. 
Christine, could a little bit of the grant be diverted to entice Garcia's to, you know, <laughs> match how, you know, the thousand, I can imagine it's probably at least a thousand dollars to, um, if not a little bit more to put a stop sign there in terms of breaking up the concrete and whatever. And, um, you know, then I'm, would they have to go back through a planning process to do that? It, you know, I'm just wondering if there's a way that they could be enticed into, um, you know, sort of the, the bureaucratic nature and then the actual like work nature of what it would take. For them to well, there, there's this stuff called paint, which could be used and, and maybe Garcia's would be willing to do that or maybe we could just do that. The town could just do that for them. Um, like a big stop on the ground. Stop, uh, yeah. you know, some, some paint across in front of the, stop, the crosswalk saying stop, um, you know, stop ahead or something. You, you, you know, just because you, you you want to you want to attract the attention of somebody who's uh, uh, maybe a little careless, but for folks who don't care, who genuinely don't care, or are those people who are perpetually in a hurry because they're important um, or they think they're important, they're they're going to blow through there anyway, regardless of what signage is there or whatever. So rather than, I, I mean, the point's been made. Uh, you know, I, I had my hand up for a while, but uh, folks made plenty of, repeated plenty of what I was going to say, um, or said it first. I like the idea of the crosswalk there. I would prefer to have the crosswalk raised. I have um, concerns about speed through that area. Um, stuff like that can be handled by dropping the speed limit and by uh, talking to the the uh, the police about being more aggressive or the, the parking enforcement being more aggressive about going after folks who are double parking in that area if it's a, a concern. But the point I think is, the point's been made, um, everybody's written it down, that uh, there's concerns about having that crosswalk there and people coming out of the parking lot, and people double parking. It, it, look, it looks like the sidewalk across the parking area is asphalt. Could that one strip that would represent the sidewalk be painted red? So as it crosses the Garcia's yes. parking lot entry? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a simple, inexpensive right. solution and it, it is visual. It would right also now. match the color of the crosswalk. Across, yeah, that's a great right. idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just highlights highlights that it's a crossing. And right. Um, I think yeah, I think people would see that more than a stop. So, I mean, we have the, you know, the planning director here and Ben here, and they were asking for a recommendation from TAC about the crosswalk. Um, and so, I mean, do we want to make a motion? It seems I'm not hearing anybody who is opposing a crosswalk in this general location. We're just asking a couple of additional questions. Yeah. Um, do, do people feel ready to maybe propose a I do let them go on with their days. Yeah, I would propose that we accept the, the, the plan as as provided by the town planning department. Okay, I, I, would we, we, I would recommend ahead, adding Bruce. that if, oh, if it's possible to make it raised. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. It, I, I then I would say, yeah, uh, I, I move to accept the um, the plan as presented by the Town planning department with the additional, uh, um, uh, sorry, the additional uh, with with modifications to potentially consider raising the cross crosswalk, um, positioning of the rapid flashing beacons, and um, positioning of traffic calm additional traffic calming measures around the crosswalk. And, and if possible, painting the sidewalk in front of the Garcia's parking lot red. Yeah, sorry, that was what I was thinking yeah. about in terms of additional traffic calming, yeah. Do we also want to mention another street light, if that's possible, on the Garcia side? That's actually, I don't know that that's... Um... That's not within the budget, so that yeah. would be out of some yeah. other budget. 
Okay. I mean, the, the, it seems creepy. like the, I walk in that area quite a bit. It seems like that area is pretty well lit. But I agree. Yeah. There, there is, there is. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at Street View, and there's, there's a few around, but not right, yeah. right at that point. Everything you recommended to add is not in the budget. So adding a street light to a <laughs> overblown budget is okay. Well, some red paint, Gilfred, cannot be in the budget. Not in the budget. <laughs> I think we recommended that we consider it, right? Not. Yeah. Right. Well, we could just, I mean, maybe we want our motion just to say something like we encourage any additional traffic. Calling. Yes, actually, that That's would be feasible. Yes. yes. And yeah, it's getting and red, red paint on the cross, you know, the crossing and okay, and How the about, re rectangular flashing beacons. Go ahead. Who would like to make this motion clearly? Marcus, I, go. I can, I can try. Yes. <laughs> um, I would move. Uh, sorry, I move that the tack accept the plan for the crosswalk across well for the crosswalks presented by the town planning department and encourage the inclusion of additional traffic calming measures that uh, include but not limited to raising the crosswalk painting oh flashing beacons i was good that was going to be after this one but yeah, yeah, okay. Flashing beacons, painting the crosswalk. Uh, sorry, not crosswalk. Sorry, painting sidewalk um, uh, along the uh, Garcia's parking lot entrance, and uh, potential addition of street lighting in the in the immediate vicinity of the crosswalk. Okay, thank you. Excellent. I, I would second. Great, thank you, Bruce. All those in favor. But I guess I'm concerned that we've added, as Guilford said, like these things aren't in the budget. But we encourage, we're not we're no. not requiring. Yes. Yeah. No. And and especially even the raised crosswalk piece, you know. I mean the, so yes. What Some I mean, of those things could be done perhaps in the future. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a yeah. matter of and, and also, I think once the crosswalk's in, you could evaluate it. I mean, I guess in the list of additional things we'd like to see, I would put the, you know, the rectangular rapid flashing beacons first and the red paint first, just because those seem, I mean, we're not really in charge of either of those, but we can just say that we would support them and we think they're a good idea. And the other elements mm -hmm. like the lighting and the race crosswalk, those are outside the budget, but you know, perhaps a, you know, well, I mean, everything's outside the budget. Yeah. And, and I'd really like to see them. Well, the rectangular flap, I mean, they're going to be some in the area. Mm -hmm. So one could be designated for that spot. Yeah, if we want to reorder the, the, the list, that's totally fine. Um, you know, just so sort of the main point doesn't get lost. And yeah, it doesn't yeah, look yeah. like we're just yeah, asking yeah. for it. Say, and I mean, we could even we could even acknowledge in our resolution that we under you know they're not even though they're not in the budget, we'd like the latter items that we'd like consideration of them or something. So do we need to redo the thing, or are we good? Yeah, I think so. I think we must. We should for Amber. So let's redo the motion. Third time's a charm. Yes. Well, and Marcus has the legal, you know, he has like the language down. Chris, did you have anything to add before we proceed with writing a motion? No, I don't. My husband just turned the um, microwave on and I was afraid I would lose the connection. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're, we're going to get this motion done and we'll, we'll let you. I have the uh, priorities as RRFBs, which are in the budget. Painting the sidewalk at the parking lot entrance, if possible. Um, potentially adding a street light as a third one. And the fourth one would be raising the crosswalk. Yeah. That sounds good. Yes. So, Thank you. Great. So that's the motion. Second? Second. OK. All those in favor? Um, Aye. Aye. And it looks like Aye. is unanimous. Um, yep. Right? Okay, so all oh, one, two, three, so thank you, all right. seven of us. Yes, yeah, thank you, planning for bringing this to us. Thank you.
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank you. I'll take care. Well, thank you. Thank right, you. Thank you. I'll stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am. Um, how do I get out of here? I'm sharing my screen. In the, in the You're end. not allowed to get out of here. That's the, <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, interesting. You're stuck forever. Yeah. yeah. So I'm still sharing my screen, right? You could. You should. Yeah. There you go. Stop. If you just leave, it'll go off. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Cool. Okay, no, Have a good night, everybody. Then. Okay. Good night. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So the next um, item uh, on the agenda is an update on North Pleasant Street improvements. Yeah. Um, hi, Kim. Before we go to that, I see that Myra has her hand raised. I am so sorry because I cannot see the hand raising. I Maybe because I was not originally a panel member. I apologize. Oh, no problem. This was real interesting. I, um, uh, I just... Sorry, Myra, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just wanted okay. to also mention um, that we do have an attendee. Um, a council member is an attendee now. So. Oh, thank you. We have one. Yeah. Who do we have? Anna Devlin Guthrie. Oh, cool. So, Hi, Anna. Thank okay. You. Um, so I just, um, the, the thing that I brought up was not on your agenda, but it actually was the original proposal for the grant, which I helped write. And I am, um, I'm just hopeful that at some point the, TAC can take up the notion of how to cross Triangle Street because it is an issue. And um, I just wanna make sure that it's in your consciousness. It was in the grant. I don't know what's gonna be involved in getting it on the, on the plate again, but um, I'm, I'm very interested in making sure that it's in your awareness. That's all. Thank you. Perfect. I agree. Yeah, it is a difficult street to cross. Um, and so are we ready for our next agenda item? The update on North Pleasant Street improvements? Um, yeah, I defer to the um, GPW on that if Guilford okay. wants to give us an update or if we'd rather hold to a future meeting. So if it's going to the TSO, <laughs> Sometime, I think it's the, sometime in the future, it's going to the TSO, it's the update. <laughs> so, so you're not ready to discuss with us then? Thank you. Well, yeah, I mean, it came to the DAC a couple of meetings ago. And so, um, but that's fine. We can get it back from TSO. Thanks. Um, and our next agenda item is looking at um, upcoming items and potential referrals from the TSO. Do you have an update on that, Tracy? Or so, unfortunately, our our TSO TSO liaison to the TAC, um, Andy Steinberg, has left our meeting. Perhaps oh. because the TSO is meeting at 7 p.m. Okay. tonight. Um, so I haven't heard any direct referrals um, from TSO yet. Now the our, the council member in attendance um, is on TSO as well, but I haven't heard any. Um, they have talked about that there could be something with um, the the proposal had been around for a while about considering lowering the speed limits all over town, like universally. And um, I know that the TSO has that on their potential plate. It's not clear when that will come back. So um, we'll be waiting to hear from. TSO on that. And um, and Anna now has her hand raised. So if we want to let her in the room to speak or just open her mic, perhaps she can give us a... She's in the room already. Hi, yeah, she's oh, in the room as an attendee. Oh, she can talk. Okay, great. I can talk. Um, so the one thing that I do think might be helpful to have on your radar, TSO is meeting at seven. Um, and one of the things we are discussing is a referral from CRC to uh, look into closing North Pleasant Street for dining in the summer. Um, there's no specific proposal on that, but just that is on our agenda tonight to discuss. So I am sure that we will be looking to you to weigh in on that. Um, and I apologize, I'm, I just pulled over. I'm in my car, so I don't have the agenda up in front of me, um, but if there are other things, I'm sure Andy will keep you posted, but that's that one. Thank you. So yep. Would that be the whole so I Pleasant, yeah, or? I just had a quick question on that. Which section of North Pleasant Street would that be? 
literally the referral said the potential of closing we have it's super broad right now um i think that that's where we're having the initial discussion and we might have more ideas but um there's no there is no plan right now it was the idea uh and we are now discussing what that means so does that just mean the repositioning of the jersey barriers to their original positions and removing the parking or are we nope. actually going to put a you know barrier across the whole of north pleasant street i, I doubt we'll do that because there's a fire station but uh we we don't know yet i i it's truly it was a really vague thing that came forward just saying hey this was nice last summer can we do something similar this that summer so it's uh, the yeah, jersey so barrier stuff it's, yeah, yeah. i'm guessing i'm guessing it's the jersey barriers but i believe one person was like well let's close the whole thing so that's why the proposal was worded <laughs> that way um but i i don't i don't see how we could close north pleasant street given that there's a fire station there <laughs> Uh, I mean, but also, I mean, if we're going to do that with North Pleasant, why why wouldn't we do it with South Pleasant too? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to come to TSO, we meet at seven. It's sure to be a thrilling time. But otherwise, uh, I'm sure Andy will uh, update you on on what comes out of our initial discussion. And um, of course, you all will be very much in the loop if if we do decide to go forward with any sort of plan. Right. Okay, thank you. And Myra, you have your hand raised. Oh, yeah, I was trying to raise it before the other uh, item went away. Uh, about North Pleasant Street, I was just going to ask whether um, the Kendrick Park, I assume that that North Pleasant Street was by Kendrick Park to determine where the sidewalk is. Is that what the discussion is that you're not going to have? Was that question for me, Myla, <coughs> for Anna, or for? Um, I No. Uh, I guess Guilford said it was going to the TSO, oh, okay. and so you didn't discuss it tonight. Oh, it, and I wanted to know no. if that's what it referred to. Uh, um, Myra, yeah. go ahead. Nope, you got it, Tracy. I think that my perception of it, Myra, was that I, um, just because you had had the discussion with the person from DPW who was designing that segment yeah. of yeah. North Pleasant Street next to the park, and yes. That was my, my perception was that we would get an update on that, um, just oh, okay. that whole section. And, um, but um, Guilford's, we're going to wait until it comes back from TSO, I guess. So that's fine. So it, it goes okay. to them and then it goes to you. Okay. I didn't know that, but I, there were Perhaps, two plans. Yeah. One okay. of them was Thanks. a good plan and one of them wasn't. So I wanted to make sure <clears throat> that you knew about that. We chose well, the and, poor plan. Right. And I, well, no, you didn't. <laughs> I got my to I laugh. Think the other thing with it's not hard to get me to laugh, Gilford. The, the anyway, other thing with um, that, the other, th yeah, thanks, Myra. The other question I had about that section, North Pleasant Street, is just that issue that we had raised to TSO about the parking, the permit parking on the west side of the street, and whether that's going to be you know, whether the parking can be moved to the park side of the street, um, you know, even if the whole project for improving North Pleasant Street isn't proceeding this summer. And whether, for example, like as a traffic calming measure, the, um, the traffic could be changed to one way with the parking and so on. Even if the whole thing isn't proceeding. We didn't talk about this at the last TAC meeting. And I was pretty, I had been surprised at the last TAC meeting that the improvements for that segment of North Pleasant Street weren't making it, you know, into the work plan for this year, though I understand, you know, some of that is because of the budget and also that the DPW is so busy with so many other items. But in thinking about it more, just that as people have been saying, the park is used a lot right now. Like every time I go by there, there are so many people there. And just if there's a way to provide safer parking on the park side of the park, even in the absence of the bigger project with the sidewalk and to remove the, um, parking the permit parking on the west side of the street and also to you know as you do those things and you also make it a one-way street to just start to get people thinking about how we want traffic calming in this area that the park is right there you know the bigger project will move forward at a later date when there is the funding for that and it can be on the work plan but even in the absence of that just to start to realize like this is a street where we're going to promote the park and park parking and so on so thanks I mean, I don't, we can talk about that as a, 
tack if we wanted. I had suggested it just um, in some conversations, just outside of the tack, just because I'd been really trying to brainstorm about what what's feasible for this year. I mean, Guilford, do you think it would be feasible to do anything on that section of North Pleasant Street this year, or would the whole thing need to wait? It's just a money. It's just a money issue. So. If, um, if there's money left over, we can start towards the end of this end of the summer. But other than that, we won't start until. But the... like, but like for example, like would, like is there money involved? Like if the street is going to become a one way street, for example, or um, or even to just switch the parking from one side to the other side, like is that is that an expensive item, or is that something that we just need to delay all the everything on North Pleasant um, Street? They can the when the TSO gets it if they want to recommend making it if you want to make, recommend making it one way immediately that's pretty easy it's just a matter of um, enforcing it um, moving the parking spaces over if you want to move those over that's just a bunch of little signs that would change sides of the street I I, I feel like that's it's it's important and um, especially for the site the sight lines and you know kind of getting getting people used to the one wayness of that street. And there is, there are serious, I, I don't, I've forgotten when exactly this was. I guess I was coming in to UMass the other day on my bike and maybe it was like later in the afternoon. It must've been, yeah, it was around four o'clock. It was yesterday. And, um, I was surprised at how many people were trying to exit UMass and using and getting really frustrated because maybe that they had to wait a moment because the the roundabout was a little bit backed up and just came charging down North Pleasant Street instead as a bypass to get into town. And um, you know, I think that is super dangerous doing that, especially if there are children at the park and people just aren't paying attention. So I think. Tracy, I think this is an item that is worth um, suggesting to the TSO for this season, especially since we haven't had a spring, right? The park went in at the end of the summer last year, right? So, well, and even, or even later, really, no, right? Yeah. I mean, and so because, I have yeah. concerns about, about that stretch, especially, well, yeah. And if parking could be on the park side, I mean, I just see so many families there already. So, yeah. Yeah. so. so maybe that's something we can um, formalize and send our suggestion over the TSO. So I think that. So it, it sounds like, Kim, what I've heard and what Guilford's saying is that TSO will be reviewing the proposal for that section of North Pleasant Street. And, you know, they could refer stuff back to us and we could make a statement at the time. So I feel like, you know, we can move along with this and encourage it at the right time but, so. thanks okay so moving along we have um 15 minutes until tso starts so and we do try to end on time Could we um just i'm not sure if there are other um items but perhaps we can work on um, <coughs> status of our tech memo to the council yeah, so I'm not sure exactly. So we had done that, you know, overall memo, just hi, we're TAC and we're an advisory committee. And I mean, part of it was just, I mean, I still hear some misconceptions and people who aren't really sure what TAC is about. It was just a short three page memo. Um, Andy Steinberg did mention it at one of the council meetings. And so, so after our last meeting, you know, based on people's feedback, I finalized it and I sent it forward. Um, I did send it to the council president. Um, and just, you know, to ask, you know, we're not asking for any action. We just wanted to provide this informational material, you know, where could it kind of fit? Like, where can it go? Um, I didn't hear back. Um, and I also reached out to the chair of TSO. Um, I mean, for me, it was mainly informational. We could perhaps make an inf um, a presentation before TSO or perhaps the council, though the council's agendas are packed at some time. So I'm still like sort of waiting to see what will happen with that, but um, we'll keep working on that. Um, so likely, yeah, I think but I don't have any other updates. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, the TSO agenda, they've been pretty full right now with the parking permit stuff. And it sounds, you know, they're getting a lot of other items, including some that are very timely that have been referred to them that they haven't taken action on yet, like the lunch carts and things like that. So um, I can circle back and talk to the TSO chair about that. That would be great. Um, I think that and then should go ahead to the TS, TSO. I mean, it, it seems like that's the most relevant place for that memo to land. land. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I had just put on the agenda just as up, upcoming meeting dates for April. Um, we had talked about, you know, we typically meet on the first and the third Thursdays of the month, but then the third Thursday is during the April vacation break for kids. So we talked about instead moving it you know, to the fourth Thursday. I sent out an email on that as well as with the March schedule. And I'm sorry, Bruce, that there was some confusion about that. We weren't meeting on the third Thursday of March and we were meeting on the oh, fourth no problem. or whatever. Um, but do, I mean, is that okay? Can we just firm up that we'd like to do our meetings then April 7th and April 28th? Did anybody have major conflicts with that. No, that works perfectly for me. I'll be in the All UK. Right. Oh, right, and, right. And Marcus yeah. had said he wasn't available, so, okay. So I, why don't I, we get those on the, go ahead, Bruce. I was just gonna say, I won't be available on the 28th, but it seems like you have enough for a quorum. Yes, I mean, now we have our yeah. additional members. Thank you. And uh, we can get quorum easier, so thanks. Yeah, I, will, I will not be at the April 7th meeting either. Oh, okay. Thank you guys for letting me know that. But again, I think is that, but it's okay because we have the quorum. So mm -hmm. thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, and then just announcements, committee comments. I mean, I do have a few different announcements, but um, if anybody has else has any, we can go to those first. Go ahead, Tracy. Okay. Um, so let's see. So I had on my list, well, one of the things was that one of the reasons that Myra was attending our meeting earlier is that um, I did go to the last DAC meeting, which was held a few weeks ago. I had been having informal conversations with the DAC for a while, just about us being more in touch with them and them with us. I mean, sometimes there's things that are referred to one of us and not the other, but like they're of interest to both of us. Um, so what we agreed to do is that Myra would receive our agendas um, and that I would receive DAC's agenda and we could, you know, have a little bit more collaboration. I mean, some of that dates back to back almost like two decades ago. And I remember the old, the committee way before our, before TAC, like the public transportation and bike committee, that at those meetings, we really did have, we had people from the senior center and people from UMass and UMass Transit. We had a lot of participation in Five College Inc. and stuff. and it's useful to know what each other's doing and stuff. So I think that that should be good. One issue I talked with them about maybe um, trying to work on is just some of the issues relating to sidewalk and snow clearance and things like that. Sort of some bigger picture stuff. There was a um, presentation from Walk Boston on those issues the other day. Um, and unfortunately I wasn't able to attend the presentation. I've asked them for a copy of their slide deck, but um, you know, there are issues all over the state in terms of um, having sidewalks cleared in a timely manner and how that can be addressed. Um, let's see, so a couple other updates. So the town manager, you know, every time there's a town council meeting, there was one this week, and the town manager always has some great updates in his reports. I really do encourage people to read them if they have time. I mean, a few things I saw in the town manager's report from this week that might be of interest is um, one, he was talking about um, that there were a lot of potholes that were created this winter with the freeze and thaw cycles. And I think the DPW is already starting to work on that. You know, if Guilford had anything to add with that. Um, also Northampton Road, which is in my neighborhood that they, um, they are doing construction now on Northampton Road from University Drive up to the center of town. That, I mean, that project's gonna take a few years and um, they put in fences to protect the vegetation. You know, the project at the end will have um, bike lanes and sidewalks or pedestrian paths on both sides and so on. But it's great to see that that work is finally underway. Um, also with right on the south and I mean the west end of that, 
with the University Drive South project and Snell Street that there is going to be that little mini roundabout going in there. Um, and the developer for the project is doing that little round, mini roundabout themselves. Um, and then one other update was, and the planning department might know more about this, is just that there was um, the Parklets grant from the state about re creating two ADA accessible parklets in downtown Amherst, which would be um, take over a few parking spaces and you'd have an adjacent sidewalk. So um, that seems pretty exciting to me. Uh, let's see a couple other things. Um, so one question I did have, I mean, this is sort of an announcement or a question is just um, in terms of the crosswalk policy, you know, if, if the council is going to be considering the crosswalks, we had earlier, a few months ago, right, we had finalized the tax version of the crosswalk policy, which had been sitting around for a few years. And so I know that Guilford, that you sent that to the town manager, but um, perhaps it would be a timely thing for the I mean, do you have any updates on that? But it, it seems like if the council and the TSO are gonna be considering crosswalks, then maybe that could be a good time to share the tax recommendation about crosswalk design. But um, uh, Gilbert, have you heard any updates on that? It's actually going to the town manager we talked about this week and he's gonna take it to the, he's gonna talk about whether it goes to the council or whether it goes the TSO first and we'll see what happens. Um, the council may get it and just say, yeah, we love it. We're just approving it, which is what the council can do. So okay. great. All right. Thank you. That's great news. Okay. And um, let's see, I didn't really, I would like to just as a committee, we had talked about in the fall and just get back to the whole North Pleasant street, North of campus. You know, we had did the two different site walks there. I know that TSO will eventually be taking that up too once their agenda gets a little later. So um, I am going to write up our notes from that earlier period. But if anybody wanted to help me, that that would be great. And um, Christine and Stefani weren't on the committee at that time, but you had both really had helpful comments last time. And Christine, that's your neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd love to like circulate, you know, what we had done. And I've been meaning to send you both um, like copies of the if I still have them like copies of the plans that Guilford had shared with us as we were doing the sidewalk, so you can take a look. So, um, great. Thanks. Really. Um, and I was also seed uh, on, somebody asked me if I'd sent this to all of TAC, it didn't really seem like I needed to, but, but there's this organization that's meeting a consortium of people on regional transit access. They had met before and they've started meeting again. And if people are interested, let me know and I can forward the emails to you. I don't really have the bandwidth to be thinking about that right now, but I am of course interested in regional transit access overall. Um, and, and it's not really in our purview, but with some of the um, issues that have happened lately on the UMass campus with pedestrian safety, I was told that there is an upcoming meeting on April 4th where UMass is having a meeting about crosswalk safety um, that it came up at the town gown meeting between the town and um, UMass. Okay. But I don't know any details about that meeting. I don't know if it's a public meeting. I hope it would be a public meeting. Um, I don't know. Do, uh, Guilford or Chris, have you heard anything about that? I haven't. No. Oh, okay. So we'll see. Uh, but the good news in terms of the UMass pedestrian and safety is that that section along Mass Ave, where the sidewalk had been closed and the pedestrian was hit on a dark and rainy night um, in the area of the closed sidewalk and killed, yes, um, that there is now a pedestrian walkway there. So, yeah. And I, they, I mean, I UMass that. has really been paying a lot of attention to the safety in that area. So it's a little shocking that there was also that incident recently. But I, but I, you know, that, that whole intersection is re was really that whole thing was very poorly planned out. It's very shoddily designed, and I, I'm I'm appalled and that UMass let that happen because you know just to take out the whole sidewalk there and not provide an a, a reasonable access across that street otherwise it it's appalling. 
And, and to, I, I'm not, it's not even clear why they even had to shut down all of Lincoln. It, you know, that was, uh, there's something wrong with that whole plan, that planning. Um, I also had a, um, a concern and, and maybe um, uh, I, I heard from a, um, someone who drives ambulances in town that it's very, um, they've had issues on um, Route 9, um, getting emergency vehicles through the, you know, I, I haven't been on Route 9 at all. I have no idea what's going on, but they were, st they said that there were um, cones you know, this was Hadley, but um, there are cones in the, in the street and they, they that made the, the lanes way too narrow on Route 9 for their emergency vehicle. And they just have to choose which cones they're gonna take out when they head over to Northampton to the hospital. Um, so I'm hoping that we don't have that same, those same kind of issues in, on our end of the um, Route 9 project. <clears throat> So I do have a related comment to that. And I realized that the Route 9 project, I'm thinking about the section that is in Amherst, the one from the center of town to University Drive. But one thing that people have mentioned to me is that, I mean, there are these traffic barrels that are on both sides of the street um, all the way along that corridor and that it's blocking where some people on sort of like the shoulder or some people bike there. And that is a pretty heavy bike corridor from the center street to down, I mean, to University Drive, including people using valley bikes, like who would get the valley bikes up at Town Hall or other places and just go down the hill to go to Big Y or whatever. Um, I would hope that long term that the, I mean, that if people are using that, you know, for biking that the barrels don't have to be like right on <laughs> the shoulder. I don't know, Guilford or Isn't anybody, there a Chris, if, if there's any no i mean there's pedestrian there's a sidewalk on the north side of the street but i'm talking about people in the road like biking and mm -hmm. the fact that like that sort of shoulder area is not very clear right now because of the winter and there's like a lot of gravel and stuff there but some people would feel more comfortable if that area was clear and it didn't have the traffic barrels there yeah. too but i mean but they when they also think feel i'm oh, sorry gone I should just think about going on another route. Yeah, I, I mean, For now, the, the, I mean, right, I mean, right now uh, it's the passable it will be, and from this point forward, it's going to become less passable mm -hmm. as you go along until it's completed. Right, but but also, you know, the emergency vehicle thing really is a concern. But absolutely, but the current situation is unhappy, right? Bye. Well. And I noticed too, I mean, this is a little bit related, but just um, that there is like the construction is underway with the new residential um, housing, the new affordable housing that's going in right next to the Amherst College track. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 132 North Hampton Road. And so, you know, there's some construction and stuff with that too, like impacting at the road, but okay. Well, I, I feel like we've used our time extremely well this time. So thank you to everyone. Um, thank Bruce, you. Do you have something to add? Well, I move that we adjourn. Yes. Second. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Chris Guilford. Thank you. Okay, see you yeah, next bye. time. Bye. Have a good bye. night. Night, Bruce. Thanks, Tracy.